Hello everybody, I have a mixed media project to share with you today. I created this altered wood slice on one of my live streams. I am a little bit behind on uh, doing the faster versions of my projects for my live streams, but I am catching up. So hopefully those of you that are not fans of the live streams can see how I created these projects. Uh, before I get into the project, if you guys could do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And leave me a comment down below letting me know if you have altered a wood slice before or if this intrigues you to do so. Also, as always, the supplies are listed in the description box down below. They are affiliate links, most of them anyways, and that just means if you click them and my links are the last links that were clicked and you make a purchase, then I will get a small commission. It does help me out uh, tremendously and I do appreciate it. All right, with all of that out of the way, I started off with a four inch wood slice and I got these at Michael's, I believe. I believe you can get them uh, on Amazon, Hobby Lobby. Um, I do suggest getting them at a craft store, that way you can use a coupon, but if you can't find them anywhere um, near you, I do have a link to them on Amazon. This was a previous project gone wrong uh, due to colors and things like that, but I am going to be adding a lot of gesso and then I added some modeling paste or paper paste and with a stencil, which is a wo woven, something woven, wo wooden woven or something like that from Prima. It's, it's listed down below. Um, I can't remember the exact name of the stencil but it's one of my favorites, especially for smaller surfaces like this one. Then I let that dry a little bit, and now I'm going to add some crackle paste. I find that this crackle paste works very well, I think better than the Prima, and you can't get the Prima one anymore um, right now, so this is my go-to crackle paste. It is a very small jar, uh, but I am using the Tonic Studio spatula uh, to spread it out. And after that dries, I am going to be adding some color, which I end up covering up because I didn't like it. I am gathering my inspiration from a challenge, a color challenge from Lindy's Gang. Uh, you can find it on their website and you just link up a project via Facebook, I believe now, and then uh, you can enter for a chance to win. I think it's $25 to their store, which is amazing. I love Lindy's uh, products. And as I wanted to get a pink color, but it ended up just being, I don't know what kind of color, a color that I didn't like. So I'm going to end up covering up, but I wanted to show you guys that I uh, too don't do everything perfect and I do have to kind of backtrack and cover things up. I know some of you appreciate when I leave that type of thing in, so I did this time. I am using some of these squirts and this is a purple color, it's very pretty. It is Polite People Purple, I believe is the color, and I end up not liking how much I put on, so I am going to go in and cover it up, uh, and I am going to be using the Distress Spray Stain, or yeah, in Picket Fence. It's very, very opaque, and it worked perfectly. I did have to add a little bit of gesso to the top of it, but as you could see, it ended up working really great and covering up a lot of that purple because I wanted some white space. I just wanted the purple in the center of my project. And I absolutely love the, the picket fence spray. It works for so many different things. I love it. So if you're in the market for a good white spray um, and one that you could use for making splatters and covering things up, uh, this one is definitely my go-to. All right, so I'm going to use my heat tool to dry this, and then I'm going to go in with some India ink. This is just white, and I found that this is really great to cover things up. I was a little bit hesitant because it does dry permanent, which I actually really like, but it does have kind of a glossy finish. It's not gloss, but it's not matte either. It's like it's kind of in between, so I was worried about adding um, other mediums and things on top of it if it wasn't going to stick, but it it ended up being perfectly fine. 
So that was a really great way to cover up a mistake as well. And I I found the India inks on Amazon for the best deal, I think. All right, so I'm just using my finger now to kind of pounce around the color, blend it out a little bit into that purple because I don't want a really harsh line. And I am just getting off the excess because I did put um, quite a bit of water to help it move around a little bit. And then I am going to go in with some more Lindy's. This is Jiven, Jasmine, Jiven Purple. Uh, and it's a really nice purple as well. So as you could see, the it is really white on the edges, which I really wanted. And then now I'm going back in to darken up that purple, the center uh, of my project that I want purple. And I'm using my finger to kind of pounce it around because it really helps uh, blend out the color into another color, in this case white. And then like I said before, it helps so that there's not any harsh lines. I don't really like harsh lines, so uh, this helps in that aspect uh, create a nice blend, um, a fade of color, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's kind of early in the morning and I am just finishing up my coffee, so I hope you guys bear with me. All right, so I'm going to heat set this and dry it so I can move on to the next step. And now I am going to add some splatters. I felt it just needed something and I didn't know the direction I wanted to go in. Uh, so the splatters really helped and all of the wonderful people that joined me in my live stream were chatting with me and helping me out trying to figure out uh, kind of the composition and what to add next. And when I was stuck, everybody said splatters and I said, of course splatters. It just helps me envision the end result, I think. So thank you everybody that joins me in my live streams. And if you haven't joined one, I would recommend just popping in, saying hi. Everybody is so wonderful, even if you don't have a lot of time uh, to watch them live. Uh, everybody chats with each other and we are beginning to be a small community of just wonderful friends and I really do appreciate them coming and hanging out and I think uh, they do as much for me as I do for them as far as some of them are homebound and it really helps them get through the day uh, to chat with people and things like that so um, it's really nice to be able to do that. And I am just now going to color this flower. This is a Prima flower, I believe, from the uh, Georgia Blues collection. Sorry, I had to think for a second. And I'm using that Jazzy Jive in Purple to add the color just sort of in the center. I didn't want it fully purple uh, because I didn't, I wanted it to sort of stand out from the background. But I did add a lot of spray to the back of the flower and then it ended up being purple. <laughs> so purple, but I do add some white uh, gesso on top of it and kind of uh, dry brush on some gesso in the end. All right, so this is a metal clock piece from Prima from Finnebear's Mechanicals collection. I get these on Amazon as well. You can't really find them many places, but Amazon uh, has them most of the time, I think. And then I added some gesso to it, and now I'm just going to play around with placement and where I want all of my flowers and the embellishments, and you could see me kind of talking my, my way through things and explaining why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, things like that. So I'm going to add some upholstery thread underneath the flowers, which I do often and I love adding the thread. It gives a nice texture and interest without overpowering a, a project. It's just something subtle and um, really nice. And then I'm going to add that main flower or one of the main flowers to the center of that. And then this is one of the stem bundle flowers from Prima. And I don't think you can really get these anymore anywhere. If you can, you better snag them up because they are beginning to be very uh, hard to find. So I add that one behind there. Then I'm gonna add some of these white flowers. Uh, these are from Prima as well. And then I have this piece that I broke uh, in half. It is a 
mold, a clay mold piece that I just had in my stash because I tend to make a bunch at a time that way I have them on hand and then I don't have to wait for it to dry for my project and all that sort of thing so I make a bunch of my favorites and then that way I could just grab and uh, grab and go I guess all right so I'm going to add more uh, upholstery thread and then one of my favorite embellishments is this butterfly these are resin pieces from Prima and I added that to the top of the flower there and now I'm just uh, kind of moving everything making everything aligned not perfectly but it was in the center and so i wanted it to look a little bit um you know uh uniform <laughs> all right now i'm going to add some micro beads and glass glitter this is where the gold comes in so the color scheme is purple like a fuchsia which i didn't really add i added a lighter purple and then the gold or yellow color. So I added that to some packaging from the Art Alchemy Wax that I like to save and I can use them to mix things like this in. And I'm using some soft matte gel to do this. And the gel dries clear and it's really great. It hardens really good. It keeps everything on there really nicely. I have never really had any big issues of you know all of it falling off or anything like that there of course is some that kind of flake off a little bit but for the most part it's there so it's a really great gel to use if you are wanting to add beads or glitter uh, it looks all white right now but uh, after it dries like i said it dries clear so you'll be able to see all of those micro beads and glitter on the project all right so i am going to finish up adding the micro beads and the glitter randomly just kind of adding the texture where I feel like I want uh, more a little bit more color and a little bit more interest and I actually do not like glitter uh, but it is the fine glitter that I do not like I always post about hating glitter uh, I'll I will use the glass glitter on occasion but that's the only glitter I like I do not like the fine glitter it gets everywhere and you cannot get it up it just is a mess so uh, if you are like that maybe try some glass glitter uh, I think it adds a nice little something to projects all right so I am going to finish up adding some gold splatters with the metallic watercolors and these are very opaque uh, it's hard to believe really that they're watercolors because they go on all sorts of different surfaces and like I said, they're very opaque and vibrant, and I really like adding gold splatters with uh, this product. I think that is going to almost finish it up besides a title, and my stream helped me with the title, so I want to thank them. And I don't have any comments to share today or a channel to feature. And I do apologize. I know some of you really, really enjoy reading those comments and like that your comments are featured. And I do really want to uh, get in the habit of doing that, but I am behind and it does take quite some time to find the comments and find a channel to feature. So I don't want to procrastinate anymore on this, um, on this video. So I am just going to add the title and that is going to complete the project and abby is going to uh close out the video hi i hope you guys like the video please subscribe thank you for watching give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you like all right, there you go. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.